Hey, welcome back. About a month ago or so, Stephen A. Smith released his list of players that he thinks are under the most pressure this playoff season to win a championship. Now, I don't really watch TV like that, but I do be on YouTube like that. And Kenny, King of the Fourth Quarter, on his Kenny For Real channel, made a video about it, his problems with his list, and the guys he'd rather see on it. So I watched that video when it came out. Then recently he did a podcast with Stephen A. where they talked about it, and it reminded me of the topic. Things change really quickly in the NBA, and things have changed a lot since Stephen A. made his list about a month ago. So I wanted to put out my list of guys that I think are under the most pressure to win a championship as we head towards playoff season. I don't see how you can make this list and not have him at the very top of it. Jokic is the back-to-back -back reigning MVP who might very well be awarded his third in a row in a few weeks. Now, none of those MVPs have been undeserved, don't get me wrong, he's absolutely earned them. But this will put him in an extremely exclusive group. Only eight guys all time have won three MVP awards over the course of their entire careers. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Michael Jordan, Bill Russell, LeBron James, Wilt Chamberlain, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and Moses Malone, a legendary all-time group of names. You know what else all eight of those guys have in common? They've all won at least one championship. 38 between them, to be exact. Now, am I expecting, especially at this point in his career, for Jokic to be up there with Jordan and Kareem with six? No, of course not. But by the time each of these guys got their third MVP, they had either already won a championship or won it the same season they got their third. Which means if Jokic gets his third in a few weeks, he's got to win a championship or else he'll be the odd man out. It's not only about MVPs though. Jokic isn't old by any means, but in sports, 28 isn't particularly young either, and not everyone has LeBron's longevity, especially centers. So the resume has got to start being built now, especially if people want to start having the conversation of putting him like top 25 all time, which I've, I've started to see. And finally on Jokic, the playoff success just hasn't been there during MVP seasons. They did make the Western Conference Finals a few years ago in the bubble, and we're in a much closer series against the Lakers than the five game series would suggest. All the games are kind of close. Um, but whether or not you think it's fair, I personally don't, but whether or not you think it's fair, people are going to question the validity of that because it was in the bubble. A big part of the letdowns in the playoffs the past few seasons has been missing Jamal Murray for both runs. I, I get that. But they just weren't even remotely competitive in either series the past few years. They got swept in 2021 by the Suns, and then 2022 they lose the Warriors in five in the first round, making Jokic one of the few MVPs that have to accept his MVP award after already getting bounced from contention. I can already hear people saying now, but they lost to the teams they were supposed to, right? You know, the Suns were the two seed, the Nuggets were the three seed. The Warriors were the three seed when the Nuggets were the six. Apparently he's not most valuable enough to overturn home court advantage, but whatever. There's no more excuses now. Murray's back and the Nuggets are the one seed. Without a doubt, the number one player with the most pressure on him to win this season is Nikola Jokic. Number two on my list of players under the most pressure is James Harden. This is the only placement that I 100% agree with Stephen A on and is actually going to be the last player that we have in common on our list. Harden's playoff struggles over the years have been well documented, talked about a ton. Going from 45% from the field to 42, shooting 24% from three in the playoff series that he got one game away from the finals. Did a lot in Houston, a lot for the city and especially a lot for the strip clubs down there. An MVP and a nine-time All-Star in nine seasons, and yet just two conference finals appearances to show for it. Is part of that because he had to deal with the Warriors reign of terror? Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's a guy that's going to be in the conversation for an all-time great shooting guard, or at least should be, but that conversation ends pretty fast when you look at the resume and see zero finals appearances, other than the one where he came off the bench for OKC. And unlike Jokic, he ain't in his prime no more. I remember when just a year ago, people were calling him Wash and not even a top 25 player anymore. Now that's past, but how soon until that's true? At 33 years old, I'd guess within the next few seasons, he's also looking to get paid this offseason, but for a franchise to want to pay him at his age, He's got to show he can do it in the playoffs. It's not like he's some young player that has time to learn how to win in the playoffs. You want me to pay you now? At your age, you got to show me you can take me over the top. Like now. Harden likely doesn't have a lot of time left as an elite player. So if he wants to get his name up in there in the tier of a Dwayne Wade, which he has the talent to, he's got to break through in the playoffs and soon. And I'm not sure he's ever going to have a better opportunity than he does right now. On to number three, based on what's happened in the standings since the trade deadline, has to be Kyrie Irving. And look, we're not going to talk about all the off-court shit with Kyrie, and there's a lot to talk about, but that's not what this placement's about. Kyrie right now is a player that's in a difficult situation. A situation he put himself into, but a difficult one nonetheless. 
the media is hyper fixated on him because of all the batshit stuff he's done and said over the past few years. He's a guy who was in the perfect situation, winning a championship with the greatest player of our generation in Cleveland in 2016. After losing in the finals in 2017, Kyrie shocked everyone demanding a trade from the Cavs so he could go somewhere where he could be the star player, the number one option, and not have to play in LeBron's shadow. Well, he got his way getting traded to Boston only to lose to LeBron in the conference finals, then the following year fall short of the conference finals, and after telling a stadium full of Celtics fans that he would happily re-sign with the team, in the offseason he left to Brooklyn to form a new power duo with Kevin Durant. Except this would be better than with LeBron, because it wouldn't be Batman and Robin, it would be 1A and 1B. Equals. Batman and Superman. But if you've ever watched a DC movie, one, I'm sorry you had to be subjected to that, and two, you knew how this was always going to turn out. But first they decided two wasn't good enough, they needed a third superstar, and they traded for James Harden. With what was supposed to be a super team, they won in two years a total of one playoff series. And in a rerun of before, Kyrie requested a trade when things didn't work out. At this year's trade deadline, Irving was traded to the Mavericks, paired alongside one of the best players in the league today, Luka Doncic. Now some <clears throat> thought that this pairing might not be a great match but it at least had the potential to make the 4 seed 30 and 26 Mavericks a real championship contender and gave Luka his first real star teammate. Since then, the Mavericks have gone 7 and 13, and now aren't just outside of a playoff spot, but at 11th in the West, aren't even in the play-in. Mavericks are a mess right now, and obviously not all of that is on Kyrie, but that's what the narrative is going to be. He's caused and left a mess at every franchise he's ever been at. If the Mavericks not only failed to do well in the playoffs, especially after making the conference finals last year, but miss the playoffs entirely, at a certain point, teams are gonna decide that no matter how talented he may be, with all the off-court issues and the lack of playoff success outside Cleveland, he just isn't worth the trouble. And a contract year is not a good time for teams to be coming to that decision. I don't hold it to just one per team, so fourth on the list, I got Joel Embiid. Embiid is in a heated MVP race with Nikola Jokic and Giannis right now. Personally, an MVP race I think should be the frontrunner for, even though most people don't seem to agree, but whatever. Just because he doesn't have an MVP to his name doesn't mean there's no pressure. Nationally, Embiid has been passed up by Jokic for consensus best center in the league. But he and Sixer fans will argue he's just as deserving of the praise. And as he's averaging 31 points per game and 11 rebounds per game over the past three years, I'd agree. Joel, though, has been at the superstar level for longer than Jokic. He's had expectations to succeed in the playoffs more than just two or three years like Joker, but since 2018. 52 wins, 51, 43 in the COVID year, 49 in a shortened season, 51 again, and now on pace for the best record the 76ers have had since he's been there. Long past of the days of trust in the process, now is time for results. And yet, he still hasn't even been to a conference finals. Guys like Luka, Tatum, Jokic, even Trey Young, all guys younger than him, all guys that have been to a conference finals. He's not getting any younger either. At 29 for a center, you gotta start accomplishing your goals now because the wheels aren't gonna stay on forever. Simmons is gone, which is for the best, but something they probably should have done a long time ago when they realized their two stars were a center and a point forward who couldn't shoot beyond 12 feet. Now though, there are no excuses about a teammate they can't shoot. You got Harden, Maxi's been going crazy. This has to be the year, especially if he wants to retake the throne of best big man in the league. Speaking of someone who might want to retake the title of best big man in the league, fifth and final on my list might be a little biased because I expect more and I'm a little harder on the guys on my team because I want them to succeed. But I truly believe that the pressure is quietly on for Anthony Davis. Just a few years ago, Anthony Davis was widely considered one of the two best defensive players in the league and a top five NBA player after the championship run in his first season with the Lakers. Since then, in three seasons, Anthony Davis has missed 104 games, has failed to reach the points per game mark he did in 2019-2020, and hasn't made an all-star game in two years. If he could just stay on the court, he's probably still a top five talent, but that's a big if. The bigger question though is, when is he gonna be ready to take the torch from Braun? Just a few years ago, I remember LeBron telling AD in a season or two, this was gonna be his team. Now it's not entirely Davis's fault, it's kind of hard to take the torch when you can't get on the court to take it, and I don't even think LeBron expected to still be this good at his age, but AD was supposed to become the guy, and it still hasn't happened. Now the team, with a new coach, after firing the one they won a championship with not too long ago, is fighting just to make the playoffs. 
Now the team is a lot better after the trades they made at the deadline, but Anthony Davis needs to be far more aggressive in these final games and in the playoffs if the Lakers want any chance at contending for a title. I mean, he can't be having games where he's putting up 15 or even 8 points while shooting less than 10 times from the field. Davis still has time to be the all-time great he had the potential to be, but to this point in his career, he hasn't even been the best player on a successful team. With the Pelicans, he was never higher than a 6 seed. Comes to LA, wins a championship in his first season, was a 1 seed, but it was with LeBron. Then a 7 seed, then missed the playoffs, and now probably no higher than a 7 seed. I mean, hopefully they get the 7 seed. I mean, they might miss the playoffs entirely if they don't get through the play-in. LeBron isn't going to be around forever. AD is going to have to become that guy one day. Whether he's ready or not, that torch is getting passed. But he's got to start taking over sooner rather than later. And by that, I mean now. This playoff run has to be the time. To show everyone that he still can be the top 5 player in the league that we know he can be. And that brings us to the end of the list. Obviously, only one of these guys, well, I guess technically James Harden and Joel Embiid can both win the championship. But other than that, only one of these guys can win a championship. So obviously, someone is going to fail this pressure. Someone is going to crack, right? Not everyone can win. But I think all of them have to at least show something in the playoffs. Um, personally, I would love it if it was Anthony Davis. And the Lakers own a championship. How likely is that? I don't really know. I have to watch this team all the time. They don't look that good. Um, but hopefully they can figure it out. I don't know. LeBron's coming back. That's nice. They did lose in his first game back, but you know he didn't even start. So it, 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 whatever, whatever. I'm, I'm not, I'm not worried. You're worried. I'm not worried. Um. Yeah. I, anyways, that's gonna be the end of the video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you made it to the end. Maybe hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Give me a like. Uh, give me a comment because I, I love reading the comments. They really, they boost my dopamine. I love it. So give me a little dopamine influx. Give me a comment. I'd appreciate it. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching and uh, peace. I'll see you next time.